I covered the uh, GC and GE Pro from Team Group and now it's time to talk about Team Group's T-Force GA Pro and we have it in one terabyte storage capacity compared to the GE and GC Pro which was which were at two terabytes of storage. Now this one right here has the same controller as the GE and GC. We're talking about Inogrid's uh, latest multi-core low power design with uh, IG5666 uh, control chip that supports uh, the latest NVMe 2.0 protocol. Now the read speeds go up to 10,000 megabytes per second and the write speeds go up to 8.5 megabytes per second. Taking this into consideration, this will be most likely the slowest Gen 5 SSD on the channel, but we'll get to that part uh, quite uh, soon. So we're talking about IG5566 multi-core controller. We're having it available in one and two terabytes of storage. We're having uh, the same thing, basically 4K LDPC low density parity check code technology to reduce basically data error rates and ensures uh, smoother uh, performance. This SSD would definitely benefit, and I'm definitely sure it would benefit, if it had additional cooler. I'm not saying this about the passive heatsink that you get with your motherboard. I'm talking about the Dark Air Force 1, which would definitely cool it down much better, which would prevent some additional problems with uh, thermals and uh, this is what happened without a doubt so we have it in one two and four terabytes actually we're having DRAM cache of course graphene heat dissipation solution with the graphene sticker smart tool trim uh, wear leveling 3d nand flash and the five year warranty the one terabyte has 600 tbw two terabytes has 1200 and the four terabytes has 2400 tbw now it's time to go to benchmarks and see where the GA Pro, I mean, we already know, 10,000 megabytes read and 8.5 gigabytes per second write. So in AS SSD, read speeds go up to 9200.88 megabytes per second and write speeds go a bit higher actually, 9320.91 megabytes per second. The thing is with the thermals, we get 68 degrees. In Auto Disk Benchmark, we got uh, read speeds at 9.64 gigabytes per second, while the write speeds 8.44 gigabytes per second. Thermals went up to 82 degrees. And what happened here? The, these speeds are the peak that it reached in Auto Disk Benchmark. When the thermals went a bit higher, this is an average of 82, it did have some inconsistency in read and write speeds. Then we go with Crystal Disk Mark. Read speeds go up to 9157.26 megabytes per second, while the write speeds go up to 8894.91 megabytes per second. Read in Crystal Disk Mark 1.3 million IOPS and write is 424,000 uh, IOPS. Uh, these thermals went up to again 84 degrees. And this brings us to the point where it might get to the con consistency problems. GA. I don't know why did they push out the GA, maybe more affordable and stuff like that. But when you compare GC, GE and GA Pro, this is the lowest in that segment. Then we go with 54.9 gigabyte file transfer and read speeds are 2.81 gigabytes per second and write speeds are 2.59 gigabytes per second. Now in this scenario, when we go with real life testing and uh, transfer speeds, I think it was impacted by the thermals because what I do is I constantly go from one benchmark to another to create some sort of a buildup because then you get some sort of a real life uh, thermals in terms of constant transfer speeds in constant load on the SSD. And this is why we got such low write and read speeds compared to others. And in 3D Mark, what we got here is 3,268 points where Comparing it to other G and GC Pro, it's right in the middle. So that's a bit strange, but positive, of course. And you have here 70 degrees uh, thermals. So I think the GA Pro, again, would benefit with the Dark Airflow 1, without a doubt, because it will lower down the thermals, get back the consistency that it needs, and keep it stable. This doesn't have to do anything with the benchmarks, but in general, this SSD is the has the lowest uh, speeds from all Gen 5 that I tested. So taking into consideration 10,000 megabytes per second in read and 8,500 megabytes per second write, it really does, even with 
what they stated, it really does go at the lowest point when we're talking about Gen 5. Gen 4, of course, it beats all of them. And uh, who knows, maybe if you have a good cooling for this one, maybe you could place it in a PlayStation 5, which would be quite solid again. But uh, in those terms, you do need a proper cooling for this one to keep it stable and uh, to make it work as it is. In those GAG and GC Pro, I would definitely recommend GC and GE Pro without a doubt. Because first, higher speeds and better thermals without the additional cooler. Of course, each one of those would benefit with the Dark Airflow 1, but it is what it is. So yeah, I'm placing the links for all three basically, so you can choose whatever you want, but I'm definitely placing a link for Dark Airflow 1, so you could basically grab a better cooling and get better performance for it, because the passive heatsink on the motherboard, specifically for this one, isn't enough. So yeah, it is what it is. Uh, that's uh, all I can say for today, guys. And um, yeah, if this helped you uh, get some more information on this lineup of Team Group T-Force uh, Gen 5 SSDs, so we have GC, GE and GA Pro, you can start a conversation in the comments below and of course uh, get some uh, ideas, opinions and everything all together. And finally, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell and I'll see you quite shortly in a new one. Thanks. Bye-bye.